Hello, this is Samar Hamdani and welcome to Samar Hamdani YouTube channel. How are you? You don't have to say you're fine. It's absolutely fine to say you're not. It's human to be not all right all the time. It's essential that we talk about it. We seek help when we break a bone. Why don't we do the same when our heart is broken? We take sick leave to nurse our physical health. Why then? is taking time off for mental health unprofessional we talk about conquering outer space we are losing a battle with our mind seems why is mental health a taboo it kills 800000 people every year over 300 million people are suffering from depression that almost equivalent to the entire population of the united states twice the population of russia there are more people suffering from depression today than the population of germany the uk france and italy combined over 260 millions people are living with anxiety disorders there are people living with both mental health is a silent pandemic it is killing us and we can stop it the first step is to start a conversation and i'll be more then happy to start one so let's start it don't we all fancy slobs celebrities lives look as perfect as their picture they have everything it seems what many of us can only aspire to have some day personal fitness coaches personal shoppers hair and makeup artists personal sh- shoppers personal stylists there is someone taking care of everything for them even their nails everything but mental health megan markles often spoke about her struggle with mental health about being depressed having suicidal thoughts during her pregnancy these are highly stigmatized topics but celebrities have started testing the waters they have triggered conversations from prime time television and newspaper headlines to dinner tables depression is becoming an issue people are talking about it's a very interesting research it shows that when a celebrity discloses his or her problem with mental health the number of people seeking mental health support goes up a celebrity disclosure serves three functions it educates people it inspires people it also serves as activism of sorts long before megan markel and the royal spoke about her personal struggle in public princess diana in 1993 she spoke about her battle with bulimia soon the number of women seeking treatment for bulimia doubled this phenomena was called the diana effect read this article Here is another study it found that when singer Demi Lovato spoke about her bipolar disorder the people who had a higher celebrity attachment to her ended up having fewer negative stereotypes about those with bipolar disorder such is the influence of a celebrities such is their potential to bring about positive change I understand that mental health struggles are very personal. The choice to disclose them all the more it comes with its own costs. But I urge celebrities to talk about their mental health, use their influence to inspire people to seek help. Tell them that depression, anxiety is not a taboo. We need to create an environment and a society that understands mental health um in a better way we live highly stressful lives there are deadlines at work responsibilities at home fleeting relationships pressure to look a certain way on social media and all of this is bound to take a toll on our mental health and there's nothing wrong in suffering from anxiety or depression the problem begins when we hide it half of all mental illness begins in the age of 14 most cases go undetected and untreated the result is this society 
the leading cause of death among 15 to 29 year olds let's try to change this trend please let's try to understand mental health so what is mental health it is our emotional health our thought patterns or our mood mental health dictates our decisions behavior just like physical health mental health also depends on certain factors number 1 genes british scientists studied 839 families 971 pairs of siblings in these families had severe recurrent major depression they also had chromosome 3p 25 26 our scientists believe around 40% of depression cases can be traced to a genetic link factor number 2 hormones there is a hormone called serotonin is called the feel good chemical serotonin's role is to balance in serotonin has often been linked to depression factor number 3 life experiences psychologists at the university of liverpool say the traumatic life events are the biggest cause of anxiety and depression They study nearly 33,000 people before drawing this conclusion. Factor number 4, family history. If a person grows around someone who is depressed, he or she is more susceptible to factor number 5, gender. This study found that a woman had a 42% chance of hereditary depression. For men, it is 29%. But when it's come to men, the stigma attached to seeking mental health is more, which is good thing. This can be broken by male superstars like Dwayne Johnson the Rock. He opened up about his mental health in 2018. He said he was depressed after watching his mother attempt suicide. You see it can happens to anyone irrespective of their age, gender, social standing. Here is some of the early signs of mental health problems. Eating too much or too little. sleeping too much or too little distancing yourself from people or unusual activities feeling low on energy unexplained aches and pains feeling a sense of helplessness or hopelessness feeling on the edge all the time like you can break into the tears anytime or yell anytime extreme mood swings are also signs of deteriorating mental health you may be hearing voices in your head having thoughts of harming yourself daily chores like going to work or dropping your children to school or taking care of them may start feeling too taxing there's nothing to be afraid of all you need to do is reach out seek help and i'll be honest the journey to help may not be all that easy there are three major hurdles in this battle to access mental health care The first hurdle is at home. Even today most families do not understand the idea of mental health. Depression is mistaken as moodiness, in- introversion or anxiety is also seen as something that can be treated over a dinner or a vacation. No family wants to have a member who is visiting a life coach. Meghan Markle was stopped from Uh, accessing health care she says she was too royal for it in china more than 91% of the people with mental disorders never seek help for their condition there are many who want to but they cannot problem number 2 lack of human resources we do not have enough specialist in this field in pakistan for example it's only 0.4 psychiatrists for per 100000 people So the next problem is expenses. Today the mental health care is a luxury. Even in Pakistan in South Asia the every session of counseling or therapy costs you up to $41 that around the 4 uh, to 5000 in Pakistan. The average cost per counseling session that you could range is from 55 to $85 and in Japan between $74 and $138 and in the United States therapists charge up to $120 per session in cities like new york or los angeles it jumps to $250 per hour imagine paying 18000 for help 
Mental wellness is a $121 billion market. It needs also to heal people. Mental health care can no longer be a luxury and you can help in making it accessible. You know how? By destigmatizing mental health. A healthy mind helps not just the individual but the entire society. Estimates from the world health organizations show that depression and anxiety cost the global economy trillion dollars every year. Let me tell you how. In lost productivity, dear bosses, take note. Do not judge an employee for taking a day off. Dear celebrities, you won't be judged for talking about your struggles. At least 20% of South Asia suffers from mental health problems. Let's talk about it. Let's make mental health care accessible. Let's put an end to this silent pandemic. I'm Samar Hamdani and please take care of yourself and your families. And please make this happen. Just speak about your mental health.